Welcome into Command Center. We are in the final week of OTAs and things are heating up on the field. We're going to be taking a look at who is stealing the show at practice and impressing their teammates, as well as those who may be flying under the radar. Plus, get your popcorn ready and sit back and enjoy the show. Linebacker London Fletcher and Cole Holcomb take us through some of their more memorable plays. And with a defensive line loaded with first round picks, it is hard to be overlooked. We are inside the film room breaking down the secret to Montez Sweat's success. And we want to hear from you. We try and tackle all the fan related questions you have about the team this offseason. And welcome on it, Julie Donaldson, Logan Paulson. And joining us today is a former cornerback for the Washington team, 13 years in the NFL, Sean Springs joining us. Nice to have you with us. Football season, baby. There OTAs. I'm happy go. to be here today. Did you like guys. OTAs? You actually, had quite a few seasons of them. Yeah, actually I did. You know, as you want to make corrections going into the, the next season, you take OTAs as an opportunity to get better, work on your game, some of the mistakes mm -hmm. and things that you want to correct from the previous season. So I, I enjoyed it. wasn't too bad for me. <laughs> yeah. And as I got older, I'd be like, nah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not practicing today. I'm not practicing right today. Uh, well, OGAs is also the opportunity for some guys to kind of show off yep. their stuff, be able to say, all right, coaches, I want to try and make the case for the 53-man roster. So that is what is happening here. Trying to get the attention from OTAs in Washington. First-round draft pick Jahan Dotson, well, he's got that down. He has been lighting it up. In just a few practices, the former Nittany Lion has already impressed his teammates, coaches, with his crisp route running, large catch radius, and, man, fans are getting excited about what is to come on game days. You know, it looks like it's not too big for him. Um, he's playing fast. Uh, he's, he's consistently getting separation. He's catching the ball. You know, uh, he doesn't say a lot. You know, he just kind of comes out here and works, which is, which is good. You know, and um, you know, I think the guys, you know, the guys like him. Carson, I know, uh, quarterbacks like throwing the ball to him. So just continue to have him work and, and get better. And there's a lot of different things we'll be able to do with him. Just to see a young rookie come in and be so developed. You know, he's developed. He's running crisp routes. Um, I'm, I'm very shocked how quick he's learned the offense. Um, but at the same time, I'm just looking at it from a, you know, was a receiver and moved to a running back perspective. So, um, I mean, he was a receiver his whole life. He's doing incredible. You know, he learned the offense. He's flying around, making plays. You guys see him out there. First of all, I like his route running. I think he runs very good routes. He's very precise with them, um, and he's got natural hands. It's just a matter now of him learning, developing, and, and growing within the scheme um, and, and really just refining his game. I mean, he, he knows how to act like a pro and be a pro, um, and so that, that's, a, that's a really good thing. You know, he and I had a nice conversation when we first drafted him. He first came in, had a chance to talk to him about, hey, look, you know, you're, 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 you're the lead rookie. I mean, you're, you're the guy that's going to set the tone for the group. And he seems to uh, adjust it very well and accepted that very nicely. You know, lots of uh, respect for, for Dotson coming in and, and early, being able to see what he's doing. But he was drafted 16th overall. You'd expect somebody drafted 16 overall to be able to come in and look like they know what they're doing and, and kind of be able to hit the ground running and come in as a starter. Who, though, from what you've watched, let's do some stars and sleepers. Uh, which stars? Who has really kind of stood out to you, Logan, as you've been here pretty much watching practice for the all three weeks? Yeah, I mean, obviously, Jahan Dotson's been mm -hmm. outstanding, but we already talked about him. The guy that I think deserves a ton of credit is Carson Wentz. I mean, just the way he's picked up the offense, his ability to put the football down the field, and the, the tight window throws he's been able to make. You know, a lot of people credit Jahan, but a lot of that credit deserves to go to Carson Wentz. He's throwing him open. They've done a really nice job. Their chemistry's on point. It just makes this offense look so different. It's a totally different animal going into the season with him at the quarterback position. When you, when you talk about leadership, I think Carson Wentz, I've heard people say he's Peyton S. like mm. with his leadership and how he approaches practice. And you will see a, everyone get better when you have a quarterback who approaches like with professionalism. Mm -hmm. They get excited about his right. live arm. And I believe Carson Wentz is one of those guys when you see it in person. You can see it on TV, but when you get to see it actually in yeah. person, you realize mm -hmm. how strong his arm is and how, how many great throws he can make. So all and of that you know, talent and leadership. Is, and that's something is that I think this coaching staff really wanted was to be able to stretch the field, yeah. um, yep. to be able to take advantage of how fast Terry McLaurin is. And of course, Dotson runs a 4-3 as well, mm -hmm. right? Be able to take advantage of that. Mm -hmm. What about if we go to the defensive side of the ball? A guy that over the last couple of days, especially, is a guy mm -hmm. that you probably know really well is Benjamin St. Juice. Yep. Like his length, his foot speed, his patience, his physicality with the receivers. I mean, yep. Jahan has been very, very sharp, except when he goes up against Benjamin mm -hmm. St. Juice. And I think it's just his length, 
his athleticism, all those things you want. Check, 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 mm -hmm. check. He's playing a little Buffalo nickel. <laughs> yep. He fits, runs well. He's just been super impressive to me. Last year seeing him, you could see the potential. Right. I, I called him like he was like a baby Richard Sherman at yeah, time. He's yeah, like six yeah. three guy. It's hard to throw him. He got great ball skills and he's physical at the line of scrimmage, which oftentimes, you know, receivers like to be fancy and yeah. give you all these moves, but when you got a guy who can stand in front of you, put his arms on you and can run with you, mm -hmm. you can't just mess around, you gotta get off the ball. Yeah. So I, I expect a great year from him. Yeah. What about some sleepers? I mean, we're, we're talking about a lot of the names, you know, that kind of should be obvious stars. And, and it's great to be able to see that they're standing out yeah. because that's what you expect of them. Mm -hmm. But what about some of the guys that maybe we're not really talking about that are kind of sleeping and should be paying, mm -hmm. we should be paying attention to? Yeah, I mean, a couple guys come to mind. Chris Paul, seventh round traffic, mm -hmm. did a great job. Curtis Hodges did a great job, but the guy that I think is probably most surprising to me is Holmes, the quarterback okay. that they drafted in the seventh round. He has just looked very, very sharp, and yeah. like we watched a little bit of film, yeah. and you, you just had nothing but good things to say about yeah, him. Yeah, I mean, the kid looked like he has some veteran experience. Uh, you, if you watch tape and you didn't know he was a rookie, you probably mm. would think that he had at least two or three years in the NFL. I like his size. I think he's a six-one kid. He can run. Usually yeah. when you see big corners, he look kind of stiff, but he moves well. He has great hips. He was planting, breaking, turning his hips, coming out of the breaks, and challenging the receiver. So I see what you see on tape. I, I, I love that this kid got a real and upside. It's not easy probably for a seventh round draft right. pick or even some guys that went undrafted to come out here yeah. and make a yep. statement and impress. But this is the time they have to if they want to be able to extend their playing days. So it's good to be able to see that those opportunities are there and taking the most of them. That is our stars and sleepers. Talking about stars doesn't get much bigger than London Fletcher talking with Cole Holcomb about some of their more memorable plays. We're going to check out three of your plays. Down 27-14. Obviously, you're thinking they're going to try to run the ball. So mm -hmm. what's, what goes to your mind right here? So... I was actually a little late on the on the key. Yeah. Because I was like, oh, this is like you said, it's a four minute situation. I'm I think they're gonna I think they're gonna run it out. Right. So try and run as much clock off as they can. So like when then you got that pause stretch it, action. Right here. Uh, right now, at the middle linebacker position, I don't know if you've been able to train your eyes to be able to see the tight end, mm -hmm. see him release. That would immediately allow you to get back to that exactly. a lot faster. So I was I, I was this was one of the situations I already had it made up in my mind that they were going to run the ball, so I was going to be super aggressive <laughs> yeah, and try and yeah. get a TFL and, and um, so we can get a quick timeout. But so in this coverage, actually, our, our you know Bobby Bobby can in this coverage on boots, like I have Juice Hider second contain. Right. Okay. There was none, so I can just get my body in the window because our you know Bobby's crashing down on it, but he saw that I was there, so he stayed up and protected that post. Okay. Yeah. And. And you, and you end up with a pick six. I ended up getting kind of lucky in terms of I got, because if you rewind it, D. Wise, Daniel Wise, number 92, does a great job. As soon as he sees yep. it, he's going yep. straight to the quarterback. Yep. So it, the, the late key actually kind of hid me behind D. Wise. So he didn't see me. He just saw the tight end was wide open. Right. All right, let's see. Let's see some of the old man film. Yeah, let's see what we got. Let's see what we got here. I, I Again, I haven't seen... This this might be in black and white. You know, I played a long time ago. <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> oh, it actually they got is. jokes. Are you kidding me? They got jokes. <laughs> they got a lot of jokes. Wow. <laughs> I see you though. They tried to get they tried to get you with the cheese in front of you. They did. So you we, weren't playing on it. So this this if we go back, this was a coverage. <laughs> Poor Tony. I love going against the Cowboys. So right here, let's let's run this back. So we used to play a ton of defenses where I, I covered Jason Wynn man to man coverage mm -hmm. and D'Angelo who's playing the nickel, he would he has a Cole Beasley in the slot. Yeah. He's manning up on him. So we made this change at halftime based on what they were doing. So once I saw Witten hook up, I was gonna drop him for D'Angelo and then I fall back into that window. Mm -hmm. For the uh, for the deep dig, you know, yeah. we call it the sucker route. Yeah, and it worked out to perfection because if, if Romo if if Romo throws it to to Witten, it's going to be intercepted. If he throws yeah. it to that's the yeah, Hall and I no. celebrate. If he throws it to to uh, Cole Beasley, I'm going to pick it. This is a better example. So right here, you see how D yep. Hall jumps that. Yep. He throws it there. I'm in that window. He's thinking he's going to have Beasley uh, yeah. open in a. Uh, in that second window. Especially, like like you said, you guys are playing man. He's thinking, just based off leverage right now, Cole's yes. got D'Angelo yep. beat. Exactly. 
Exactly. <laughs> so he was. That was a great game. That was a Thanksgiving Day game, man. The old footage, wow, that's funny. <laughs> Can't believe they put it in black and white. They tried to. All right. In case you missed it over the weekend, former Washington and longtime quarterback Ryan Fitzpatrick has decided to call it a career. While his time in Washington was cut short due to a hip injury, he played an impressive 17 seasons in the NFL for nine different franchises. The former seventh round pick finished his career with 34,990 passing yards, 223 touchdowns, 169 interceptions. And the start of the times uh, for the Commander's preseason schedule have been finalized. Washington's lone home game of the preseason will be held Saturday, August 13th, 1 p.m. as we welcome the Panthers to town. Following Saturday, the Commanders take on the Chiefs at Arrowhead Stadium, August 20th, 4 p.m. And then we close out the preseason with a quick trip to Baltimore for a 7 p.m. kickoff on the 27th. Coming up, Chase Young is not the only defensive end making his return from injury. We head to the film room to break down Montez Sweat's game next. And we'll be back with more Command Center after this. I think his presence, um, I, I think as far as his skill set goes, it's, it's understanding how to use it. He's got tremendous skill set, he really does, and, and, and as he continues to grow and learn and understand how to use it, he becomes more and more dynamic as well. Um, and I think it's the same thing with Chase. Once we get Chase back on the field, it's understanding how to use his skill set, not just the raw power that he has, but the athleticism. Um, and, and for Montez, it's the same thing. But I think you guys notice he, he brings a little bit of energy. You hear his voice out there. You hear it and, and how it ramps things up, um, which we've got to learn to keep it down. You know, we're trying not to get anybody hurt right now. We're really just trying to learn and grow and develop. And with four former first-round draft picks on that defensive line, it's hard to think that anybody would get overlooked. But as you just heard head coach Ron Rivera talking about what Montez Sweat brings to the field with his play and also with his voice, big things should be coming for him. Of course, he missed time last season with a broken jaw, but it's good to see him back on the field and contributing. So what is it that we can expect from Montez Sweat as he goes into his fourth year? Well, let's go into the film room with Logan Paulson and Sean Springs. Thanks so much, Julie. Here with Sean Springs to talk about someone who I think is a pretty special football player, and that's Montez Sweat. And all offseason, I was hearing about that this guy right here, Trayvon Walker, mm -hmm. is an athletic freak. But when I look at these numbers, man, I'm, what do you see? I see a smile on my <laughs> face because as a defensive back, when you see those type of measurements, uh, vertical inch, 36 inch vertical, 4-4 as a defensive lineman. And then the arm length, too, man. Yeah. You love that stuff. You, I'm thinking sacks. I'm yeah. thinking, I'm thinking like, oh, you only got to cover for a little bit of time. Yeah. And the guy with that type of speed and athleticism will get you the quarterback. Yeah, and that's exactly – I'm glad you brought that up. Athleticism and speed and power, and that's what he brings to you in a dynamic way. And let's take a look. This is one of my favorite plays of the year. This is a backup tackle. But watch him attack this edge here. See the arm length. See those 35 and a half inch arms. You see him attack this and the power to finish yep. this rush. And this ball would have been completed. Yep. But that's what that great that defensive end play gives you. And, and you're, t you're talking about a, not only a completed pass, but you're talking about a completed pass, Logan, in the red zone. So yep. when the ball has to come out quick, and the fact that he was able to use his speed, use his long arms yep. to, to affect the throw, he right. not necessarily the sack, but he was able to affect the throw, so therefore it wouldn't have completed a touchdown. Absolutely. And then the thing about him, he's not the, he's not the most polished pass rusher. But right. again, the arm length, the physical tools, they get him out of some stuff. And watch his hand use yeah. here. Love this. Get this guy mm -hmm. turned out. Get out of here. What's he doing? And you right. get a sack on one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. And, and when a lot of times what happens, you know, when you are that athletic, people talk about, well, you don't have a lot of moves. Yeah. You, don't have a lot of, you don't have a lot of good technique. You, oftentimes you may not you don't have need to. It. You don't need it. Because you're able to do what we just saw in the play. So he was able to use his hands, yeah. get, the, get the offensive uh, tackles' hands off of him, yeah. and still keep his outside leverage and make a play on Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, I love it. And then again, like you talk about being disruptive in awareness, you're going to get a down, you're going to get a pull, and then this tackle's going to pull. Yep. And watch how disruptive this young man is here on this play, grabbing the tackle, taking the down blocker, 
and this running back has nowhere to go because he has to bubble, and Allen's able to get in on yeah. the play. And, and see, those are the plays that go unnoticed, but when you when you as a defense and you're watching that tape, you understand how important that is for you, everybody else to be able to run to the ball. Now you got an outside edge defender who's getting up the field, yeah. making the ball bubble, allows the linebackers to be able to scrape and run. Absolutely. So now the whole defense can play because of one man's sacrifice and awareness on the play. And I'm really glad you brought up the term bubble because they play an interesting technique on the edge here. I think most people are used to seeing these guys kind of right. get outside here, right? right? But they actually attack the inside shoulder of the offensive lineman, and their goal here is to get pushback so they mm -hmm. can play this gap and this gap, which right. is something that you don't see around the NFL too much. But when you got 35 and a half inch mm -hmm. arms, you can do that. Check him out here, getting great pushback. Yep. So when this back comes up, yep. he's got a bubble, lose mm -hmm. ground, which allows him and mm -hmm. Jamin, like you just said, yep. To run to that football. And we talk about playing two gaps. Yes. So now you, you a two gap technique from a defensive player standpoint, you have to be an engaged offensive tackle. Yep. You have to be able to lock him out with yep. your strong, long arms. You got to be physical at the point of attack. You, a lot of guys like to go upfield because they have speed, yep. but it, often you have to play physical. He played physical at the point of attack. He was able to make a play on the ball or at least make the ball bubble again or at least squeeze his gap. Two gaps. He yeah. actually played two gaps for those at home. Yeah, because he's getting such good vertical yep. push here. And again, mm -hmm. you see his eyes here. Yep. They're on the back, right? So he, yep. can, he knows. He can yep. protect this C gap. And like you saw in that last clip, mm -hmm. you can play the edge and you mentioned the arm length. And then low man wins. Yeah. Uh, it's all about the leverage. Oftentimes, if you can get up underneath someone and you can use your leverage, you can affect the play. Yeah, and there he is for the tackle, tackle for loss. And again, that's the skill set he brings, man. Yep. Big, physical, athletic dude yep. who loves to play football. Excited to get all these guys healthy again. Despite his third season being cut short due to injury, Montez Sweat has put up some impressive numbers during his time in the NFL. Through 42 career games, the former 2019 first-round pick has recorded 21 sacks to go along with an interception, seven forced fumbles, and 23 tackles for loss. And we cannot wait to see what he does when he returns to the field healthy in 2022. Now still to come, we're getting the pulse of the fans and answering your questions about the Commanders ahead of the 2022 season. We'll be right back. What did one dinner plate say to another? Come on, man, you gotta get this one. What did one dinner plate say to the other? Yeah. Tonight, dinner's on me. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. All right, Kate, what's up, guys? Well, the team has announced their themes for each home game this season. Our preseason opener against Carolina is the play football event. Week 5's game against the Titans will be the annual Think Pink and Breast Cancer Awareness game. And fans will get their first look at the all-black uniforms against the Vikings in the Salute to Service game. That'll, That'll be, be sharp. Oh, all yeah, black, all so. black. All black. I'm looking forward to that. Week 17, we honor the Hogs on Fan Appreciation Day against the Browns. So important. They were out of our history, right? Respect. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. If you want to know more, folks, you can go see the full list on commanders.com. Now, the theme game is always fun to experience for the fans, and so we wanted to include part of our discussion as well. We went out to OTAs and got some of the fans to give us their questions that burning to be answered to you guys. And the first one, well, here it is. How they, how they view the chemistry coming together. I know Logan's big on that. He was a very good uh, tight end for, uh, for, for Washington when he, when he played, and uh, he knows the game well. And I think uh, he's a good, uh, good at analyzing what's going on with the team right now. And so uh, I think he's a good pickup for the command center to have uh, to, do this, to, to do the analytics. And, uh, and I'm just uh, interested in seeing how, how he thinks everything's Jalen and coming together. We're not worthy. Oh my We're God. You're the man. I got to give that guy some money. Jeez. Oh Holy my goodness. Cow. That was your dad, wasn't it? <laughs> that was my dad. Yeah. Yeah. Had to be related to Logan. <laughs> <laughs> had to be. All right. So, what do you think? So, chemistry. I think at this yeah. point of the year, the offense is gelling really nicely. And I thought the defense was doing better. But then mm -hmm. the man, the myth, the legend came in, Sean Springs, and said, wait a second. Look at some of this back end stuff. And so, I think the defense has a little bit more ways to go in terms of gelling and being mm -hmm. together. But that's why you have OTAs. That's why you have these yep. taxes to get those things corrected. Offensively, really excited where they're at. Carson Wentz. Wentz looks great. Chemistry with the receivers, outstanding. Defense, a little ways to go, I think. And I, and I think, you know, with Coach being here his third year, the staff is still intact. These guys understand the expectations that Coach Ron's looking for. Yep. So now, guess what? Play fast, develop that, that chemistry, develop that friendship. We got some new toys to play with. I'm excited <laughs> to see these, these rookie receivers. But some of the guys coming back, uh, Curtis Samuels healthy mm -hmm. and yeah. Sweat and those guys. So the chemistry will continue to get better. And Coach did say it always takes three to five years. Yep. So this is, this is year it. three. Time to go. Our next question is... 
where maybe you think we're going to be in the East Division, mm. NFC East Division, like first, second, third, fourth. Ooh, okay, mm. that's what it all boils down to, Ooh. right? How are we going to do against the Cowboys? It's the so Eagles, early. It's so early. Giants. So much pressure. So early. Way Bravo. too early predictions. Okay, go. Yeah. All right, if I have to start first, you know, I'm usually pretty tough because I have high <laughs> expectations for the franchise, but I'm going with this year. We're going to either take first or second, depending on how we come out the gates. I think we can go 3-0 and before the week four matchup against the Cowboys. If we're 3-0 and with the high, flying high and we beat the Cowboys, that can put us in first place, and we end up late with those guys in the season. So Yeah, I actually thought I was going to yeah. disagree with you, but I, I agree. I think but, that, but I, think that, I think the team to beat in the division is Philly this year. I think one or two with Philly. And I think this team is poised, Philly, right? Huh? Yeah, yeah, Philly. Yeah. I'm about Philly this year. I okay. think they've got a really nice roster, really yeah. fleshed out. But yeah, in terms of our team, I think the quarterback addition is going to be yep. nice. I think it's going to add some depth in mm -hmm. terms of receiver position. Excellent. So I think, yes, I think this team's much, much better than last year just because you bring in a guy like Carson Wentz, oh. Wentz you can ch totally change the dynamic of this okay. offense. How many games do you think it's going to take to be able to win the division? Oh, that's a great question. I, I think you're going to have to either be 10 and 7 or 11 and 6 to win yep. the division. Yeah. I'm 100% on board with that. Yeah, yeah. It just, just the way the division lays out yeah. this year. That's all right. Well, for the past two seasons, Washington has had seven wins. But of course, as you just mentioned, things are looking good, which means we should be able to take that extra jump. And maybe it does get you to 10. We'll see how Car that goes. Carson gave us. Yeah, Carson may give us three yeah, extra wins this year. Yeah, I'm yeah, thinking I think Carson think can right. do that. Stability. Right. All right. Thanks. That's going to do it for this command center. For Logan Paulson, I'm Julie Donaldson. Of course, Sean Springs. Thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate having you out here on the show today.